Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to share with you some of the details of my trip to Egypt. I was there for eight days and saw many different parts of the country. There is entirely too much to squeeze into one video. So today's video is a general overview of my entire trip and I'll be releasing some more videos with details on each location separately. But today I want to talk to you a little bit about the whole trip in general. We flew direct from JFK to Cairo International on Egypt Air. We booked our vacation through Memphis tour groups. When we landed, we were greeted airside and escorted through customs and they assisted us with getting our visa. We had to pay $25 in cash US dollars upon arrival for our visa then we were taken to our personal van air conditioning and very comfortable as well as decorated as you can see and we were escorted to our hotel in Giza it was a 45 minute ride we stayed at the Hilton Pyramid Gulf it was wonderful absolutely beautiful a little dated in the rooms, however, it was very clean and well kept. Got a beautiful view of the golf course, felt like I was in a little oasis. This was the breakfast buffet that was included as part of our tour package. They had several different options, pastries and cereals, as well as an omelet bar, hot foods, several different selections for any type of eater. The first tour that we got to do was visit the Pyramids of Giza. This was absolutely incredible. It truly is impossible to come up with words to describe how amazing this was to see in person. After exploring outside Khufu's Pyramid, which is the largest one, we chose to take a tour inside, and I don't regret that. You might have an issue with this if you're claustrophobic. There are several small spaces and it was quite warm so don't recommend it for anyone that has claustrophobia issues however we had a wonderful time it is a workout climbing up those steep steps and you're kind of in a hunched over position the entire time except for this part here it was wide open here but you're really crammed down into a tiny space you can see that gentleman there climbing through that's about how tall the most of the climb was up until you get here to the king's room absolutely wonderful after the pyramids we moved on to the camel ride they take you on a short camel ride about 20 minutes out to a wonderful viewpoint where you can get some great photos of your group with the pyramids in the background fun fact did you know that camels whistle <laughs> After the camel ride, we made our way over to the nearby Sphinx, got an up-close view of that. After the Sphinx, we made three unscheduled stops that were scheduled by our tour guide. One was at a cotton shop, one was at a jewelry shop, and the other was at a papyrus institute for added shopping. Then we enjoyed lunch here at this beautiful location. The food was okay, but the location was the real star. Then we headed over to the Egyptian Museum. This is the older museum over in Tahir Square. You can see it was still quite crowded. They had several artifacts that have already been moved over to the gem, which is the new museum that's being built. But they still had quite a few artifacts, including this throne here, which was King Tut's or King Tutankhamun's throne got to see the death mask as well as the sarcophagi. After the museum, we made our way over to the Kana Khalili, which is the market in Cairo. We, due to the unscheduled stops, only had a few short moments here. I think we spent 20 or 25 minutes in the bazaar, which was disappointing because I would have rather spent more time here and less time at those government shops. The next day we met at 3.30 a.m. So we had the hotel pack us a breakfast. Had a couple of croissants and pastries, a banana and some juice. And we caught a flight from Cairo down to Aswan. We were once again meted by Memphis tour group personnel and they escorted us to our beautiful hotel, the Tolop 
Aswan Hotel. They had the most beautiful decor, and the elevator seen here is the most exquisite decor. Absolutely beautiful to look at. And this was our room. We were supposed to have two separate rooms. There were three of us traveling, but they upgraded us to a suite with two separate sleeping areas and two separate bathrooms. As you can see, the accommodations are nice and very clean and well-maintained. Little bar area there with a coffee maker. You can see a spacious large bathroom We've got a separate shower and then a separate tub it's very awkward though with the sink there encroaching on the toilet space but once again very clean and comfortable the only issues that we had at this hotel and we had the same issues in cairo the power would frequently go out it wouldn't last for long maybe just a minute or two but the power would go out frequently which was kind of annoying if you're not used to that sort of thing, but we grew accustomed to it. But the real star of this hotel was this view of the Nile River. Absolutely stunning. After getting checked in and dropping off our belongings, we made our way over to the granite quarry with the beautiful pups there. And that's the unfinished obelisk of, they believe, Queen Hatshepsut. It was never finished because it cracked right down the middle and they never were able to complete the construction of that particular obelisk. Then we made our way over to the High Dam, which was built to prevent flooding along the Nile in the 1960s. Absolutely beautiful view. A little bit colder than I would have liked, but it was still a beautiful day with the sun shining. After our visit at the High Dam, we took a scenic drive over to the Temple of Philae. When they constructed the High Dam, several of the monuments would have been flooded by the newly created Lake Nazar. The government, along with several different organizations, took on a project to relocate some temples, including the Temple of Philae. So the whole temple was disassembled brick by brick and rebuilt on a higher ground on a different island. So you do have to take a boat to get to the Temple of Flay, which was kind of fun. It's a bit like bumper boats. They had no regard for hitting other boats in their endeavor to get out away from the dock to get us on our way. The entire time that we were in Egypt, we were escorted by a English-speaking tour guide that gave us several different details about the areas that we were visiting. Here we're making our way along the Nile to get to the Temple of Philae, and there's our first view. This is inside the Temple of Philae. It's also named Cat Island. They have several different cats there. Just help keep away the snakes and the scorpions. The government placed them there on purpose. And they did a good job because we didn't see any snakes or scorpions the entire time that we were there. On our way back from the temple, we saw this young boy here jump onto the back of the truck to hitch a ride. This kind of thing was a common occurrence all throughout our travels in Egypt. Very brave and daring. We also stopped at McDonald's to grab a quick bite to eat. We were exhausted after the day's adventures. I couldn't believe how affordable it was. We got five Big Mac meals and three McFlurries. And it was 820 Egyptian pounds, which is just about $26. Took the food back to our hotel and sat out on the balcony and enjoyed the beautiful view while eating our McDonald's. The next morning, we had an early start. We had the hotel pack us a breakfast so we could eat on the way to Abu Simbel. We got chips, some sandwiches, fruit, and pastries. The drive from Aswan to Abu Simbel is about three and a half hours. You do stop with about an hour and a half remaining at the only wayside stop. They have facilities to use the bathroom and they also have a spot where you can purchase coffee. If you do want to use the bathroom, you do have to pay 10 Egyptian pounds, which is equivalent to about 30 cents US. And if you wait to use the bathroom at Abu Simbel, you also have to pay 10 pounds to use the bathroom. Neither one of these locations had soap. 
I highly recommend bringing hand sanitizer or your own soap, and neither one of the places had toilet paper, so make sure you bring your own. Finally arrived at Abu Simbel. This is another one of those temples that was rebuilt due to the flooding waters from the building of the high dam. Abu Simbel consists of two separate temples. This one here is the smaller temple dedicated to Queen Nefertari. The other larger temple is dedicated to King Ramses II or the Great Ramses. Things to note about visiting Abu Simbel besides the lengthy drive to get there. It is quite a walk from the entrance gate down to the temple. It was extremely crowded, however, once you got into the inside. It was difficult to take pictures and even walk around to look at the different hieroglyphs on the wall. It was impressive to see. I'm glad I did it. However, I don't know that I would do it again and visit a second time. This is the inner sanctum here. You can see the four silhouettes there. The three on the right are in direct sunlight from the entrance. Those are the sun gods. And the one over in the corner, not in the sunlight, is appropriately the shadow god. There you can see Ramses in the Battle of Quadesh, pictured on the wall. And on our way back here, you can see a little bit of a mirage forming in the distance. Finally made it back to Aswan. And we got to board our cruise. We are on the MS Salacia. Now there is limited dock space. So I wanted to show you how we get on our ship. This is not our ship. They dock boats to other boats to keep them secure. So we had to go through that boat, through this boat, which is titled the Nile Paradise. And finally, our boat, the MS Salacia. So you have to go through the three boats to get to our boat. I will be posting a separate video with a complete ship tour, but I wanted to give you guys a brief glimpse about what the cabins look like. This here was the cabin of someone that we were traveling with. See a small little bathroom there. Wood paneling. Queen size bed. And a TV, as well as some windows. And this is our cabin, same size bathroom. monogrammed towels and you guys this hair dryer i don't even know it looked like a vacuum cleaner i was kind of scared of it i ended up not using it I was intimidated couldn't do it but the stateroom was very comfortable a little sofa there a tv king size bed little vanity area and all of the windows this was one of the buffets that we had on board. Several different options. They always had a bit of a salad option, two different soup options, and then the entrees rotated each meal. All of it was quite delicious. They had a good mix of foods that I was familiar with and some that were native to Egypt. Each day that we were on the ship, breakfast, lunch, and dinner was all included in the price which was great. And they had snacks set up on the bar area, so we never went hungry. Little different bread stations there and all sorts of desserts. That was Om Ali. It was quite tasty. Those magical little bites are called dumplings. They were similar to like a donut or maybe a churro, but they were very good, and those had an interesting texture. It was a shredded coconut kind of thing. And they always had a good selection of different cheeses, vegetables, olives. Up here is a brief glimpse at the bar. And then coming down here, you can see that video playing. That's actually different recordings that they took of all the passengers while we were on the ship. That way we could celebrate the different moments and you could purchase the DVD at the end of the cruise. That was a jewelry shop. They also had figurines. That's the dining room. And this is the library. They had a few books on Egyptology and ancient mythology and a little seating area that was nice and cozy. Over here is another souvenir shop that had t-shirts and scarves and different items for purchase. 
We chose to do another excursion to a nearby Nubian village, so we hopped aboard our private boat and set sail from Aswan. This kid paddled up and held onto the side of our boat and sang to us for tips. The views alone on the tour out to the Nubian village were spectacular. I couldn't recommend this higher. It was only $35 per person for this entire side excursion to and from the Nubian village. There you can see one of the Nubian villages people get by the dock there, then are met by camels and taken up to the village side. And this is inside one of the Nubian houses in a village. You can see the sand all over the floor. That is intentional. They say that they like sand on the floor so that they can see scorpions and snakes or tracks if they leave any. Um, once again, we did not see any scorpions or snakes or spiders or any creepy crawlies the entire time that we were there. Thankful for that. I'm not a big fan of that kind of thing. But this Nubian village really blew my mind. I could not believe how beautiful it was. The colors that they used were absolutely stunning. And this was on the way back from the Nubian village. Night had fallen. The sunset was spectacular. And just enjoying the ride back. We climbed up on top of the roof and enjoyed the seating up there. It was cold. I'm very fortunate that we had our jackets, but it was worth it. And that lighted room that you see on top in the front of that ship, that is actually our cabin. That's our ship, the MS Salacia. You can see the three different levels there toward the back, all those lit rooms on that third level. That's the dining room. And the upper deck, they've got a pool up there and what they call Egyptian seating where you kind of sit cross-legged on these cushions and just kind of enjoy the outside area. It's a little bit too cold to enjoy the outside area as much as we would have liked. And this area here, you get a great view of how the ships are docked one to the other. And the next day we finally set sail, leaving Aswan and on our way to Kamambu. And as I said earlier, I'm going to be posting separate videos with more details at each one of these stops with better pictures and videos. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that content. This was our first glimpse at Kalmambu. This temple was mostly reconstructed. It was largely destroyed over the years, but they did reconstruct it. It's a unique temple because it's actually for two separate deities. It's split exactly in half and the two halves are identical. One half is for Sobek, the crocodile deity, and the other one is Horus, the falcon deity. It's commissioned by Ptolemy V and the name Kamambu means hill of gold. We didn't see any gold while we were there, but it was very awesome to see this temple. I think I enjoyed it so much because it was not crowded, so we really got a perfect time to enjoy the beautiful weather and got a more personal feel because we got to see all the different hieroglyphs without fighting all the crowds. After that temple, we headed back to the ship and set sail. This time, we were en route to Edfu. This is that top deck. They've got an outdoor kitchen there. They didn't use that kitchen while we were on board. It was just a little bit too cold to utilize it, but we bundled up and braved the weather to get these beautiful views and pictures for you. We continued sailing through the night and ended up docking at Edfu. So when we woke up, we had breakfast and then set out straight to the temple. The cool thing about the Edfu temples, we got to ride a horse carriage to get there, which is the preferred method of transportation for the locals from the cruise ship boats to the temple. As you can see, they call that the garage, the parking garage for all the different carriages. Many horses and carriages there. And this is the Edfu temple. This is the second largest temple in Egypt, second only to the Karnak temple. It's quite impressive to see. It's absolutely beautiful. And I know I've said I've been thankful for having my jacket, but I 
vastly underestimated how cold it was going to be. So if you're planning on going around the same time I did early February, make sure you bring plenty of sweaters and jackets. It was still very early. The sun had only just come up. You could still see your breath. It was quite cold. So make sure you pack accordingly and dress in layers because as the day would proceed and you're walking around, it would get warmer, but in the mornings it was definitely quite chilly. And this, like some, several of the other temples, was quite crowded once you got inside and difficult to maneuver around. You can see several of the other tour groups that have their guide, and it's kind of chaotic. I was very fortunate that we went with Memphis Tours. That way we had a private tour, and it felt more intimate. We got to skip lines and have all the advantages of a tour group without all the hassle and chaos. It was an incredible experience. Highly recommend the group that we went through. I will post the details down below in the description and feel free to ask any questions if any of you are interested. But this is once again inside the temple. See how crowded it is? It was very difficult to maneuver around and get good pictures. So I definitely appreciated Kamambu and other places. It's my husband. They let him drive the horse carriage on the ride back. He enjoyed it a lot. Back on the ship here, we had some very hard hustling people trying to sell their goods they would come up to the ships with their goods and display it for us and then they'd throw it up for you to view if you wanted to and then if you wanted to purchase it you'd throw the money back down it was quite interesting very unique sales tactic these are just some more scenes of sailing down the nile wish it could have lasted a few more days just relax and enjoy the scenery passing by it was so beautiful seeing the contrast of the green trees and the sand dunes in the background the temple of luxor was without a doubt the most disappointing experience of all of our egyptification for one reason we were expected to have two hours here and unceremoniously all of the lights turned off and they said it was closed and told us to get out so we only got to spend about 18 minutes there this beautiful view here are the hot air balloons that are flying over valley of the kings on the west bank of luxor absolutely beautiful morning we got up extra early so we could see these balloons take off and get to the valley of the kings with minimal crowds we had considered going on a hot air balloon ride but read up on the safety regulations and also decided that we wanted to hit up Hatshepsut and Valley of the Kings before all the other crowds got there and we wouldn't have been able to do that and a hot air balloon ride so we opted for less crowds and hit Valley of the Kings first we were the second golf cart there to arrive so we had virtually no crowd at all with your admission you get access to three different tombs and you can pay extra to access some of the other tombs, such as Seti I and King Tut's. We opted not to do that on the recommendation of our tour guide. He said that we would be satisfied with these ones and didn't feel the need for us to spend extra money to see other tombs. And I must say he was correct. They were beautiful and we were satisfied with the three that we did see. And once again, you guys, I have so much video content from going inside these tombs. So be sure to subscribe because I'm going to post that video soon and I'd hate for you to miss it. And I do apologize about the lights here. They installed those on purpose, but I really wanted you to be able to see the colors and the hieroglyphs. So I kept this video in here. I wanted you to see it. Even with the annoying lights, it is still beautiful to see all of the different colors that are still here after thousands of years and here we're exiting back out through the gates up into the central valley the weather was just beautiful sky was almost an unreal shade of blue absolutely gorgeous could have spent all day here if they would have let me and i didn't have any other plans but there's just so much to do and see in egypt making our way over to queen hashepsut's temple another beautiful view of the hot air balloons 
Queen Hatshepsut's temple ended up being one of my favorite visits the entire vacation. Do not miss this stop if you have the chance to come to Egypt. And go in the morning so you can see all the hot air balloons. It truly was wonderful. It's quite a few steps, but if you take your time getting up there, it's no problem at all. I will spare you the recording of the long walk. This is inside. If you see up there, it's beautiful representation of the starry sky painted on the ceiling of part of her temple. Next on the agenda was stopping at the Colossi of Memnon. I'm sure once, way back in the day, it was very cool to look at, but since most of it was repurposed for the Ramesseum, it wasn't an impressive sight any longer. So we stopped there, spent literally two minutes there, and then headed on to the next stop. I do regret not bringing cat treats because there were so many cute little kitties I would have loved to give a little snack to. And this is at the entrance to the Karnak Temple, the largest of all of the temples and absolutely the most impressive next to the pyramids in my opinion. It was very large and I felt like every time you took a turn there was something more to explore. This is another one of those places where I could have spent hours. We also saw Khonsu's temple and got to talk to an Egyptologist and here you can see that they're restoring some of the color. They're not painting it, they're just masterfully restoring the pillars there here in the hypostyle, hypostyle hall. And we headed back to the airport and hopped a Nile Air flight from Luxor back to Cairo. This time we stayed at the La Passage Hotel right near the Cairo airport. Again, the room was very clean and well kept. This one was a little bit more modern. And the common areas were very clean and well decorated. They had several different dining options and an outdoor pool that was just too cold to use comfortable bed, TV, all your normal accommodations that you'd find. The next day we had a free day. So we hopped in an Uber and took a 50 minute ride to the gem, which is the Grand Egyptian Museum, the stunning new museum in Cairo. It's at a 50 minute ride and it cost us six US dollars. Now, the gem is not completely open. Only the Grand Hall and the staircase are accessible. All the other exhibits are still closed. The gallery halls are closed. They did have a King Tut immersive experience that we chose not to take part in. We saw the reviews and most people said that it was more for the younger kids and stuff like that. But we did catch an exemplary lunch here at that table overlooking the staircase at a place called Zuba's. Here's the menu in case you're interested. It was my favorite meal that we had in all of our time in Egypt. We ordered koshery and a couple of other side items and a honey sugar cane drink. It's all very tasty. And this is the staircase overlooking the grand hall absolutely beautiful and the gift shop was spectacular wonderful selections and most of it was made right there in egypt from local artisans really enjoyed that and there's that place where we had lunch you can take the stairs or they have an accessible ramp there that little escalator that moves you up in case you need that to get up there but we really enjoyed this I know that once it has its grand opening, it's going to be quite spectacular, but we had low expectations about what we were going to experience with the partial opening, and we were blown away by the beauty of the building and the views, like this one of the Giza pyramids. It really was spectacular. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions, be sure to post them down below in the comments. I will get back to you. I will post descriptions about the tour company and some of the places that we visited so you can follow the links. 
Again, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to click that like button and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content that I will be posting, including more videos of Egypt. Thank you again for watching, everyone. Until next time.